Section 6 of the Dhammapada, chapters 23 through 25. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Roger Turnell. The Dhammapada, a collection of verses, being one of the canonical books of the Buddhists. Translated by F. Max Muller. Section 6. Chapter 23. The Elephant. Silently shall I endure abuse, as the elephant in battle endures the arrow sent from the bow. For the world is ill-natured. They lead a tamed elephant to battle. The king mounts a tamed elephant. The tamed is the best among men, he who silently endures abuse. Mules are good, if tamed, and the noble Sindhu horses, and elephants with large tusks. But he who tames himself is better still. For with these animals does no man reach the untrodden country, Nirvana, where a tamed man goes on a tamed animal, namely on his own well-tamed self. The elephant, called Dana Palaka, his temples running with sap, and difficult to hold, does not eat a morsel when bound. The elephant longs for the elephant grove. If a man becomes fat and a great eater, if he is sleepy and rolls himself about, that fool, like a hog fed on wash, is born again and again. This mind of mine went formerly wandering about as it liked as it listed, as it pleased. But I shall now hold it in thoroughly, as the rider who holds the hook holds in the furious elephant. Be not thoughtless, watch your thoughts. Draw yourself out of the evil way, like an elephant sunk in mud. If a man finds a prudent companion who walks with him, is wise, and lives soberly, he may walk with him, overcoming all dangers, happy, but considerate. If a man find no prudent companion who walks with him, is wise, and lives soberly, let him walk alone, like a king who has left his conquered country behind, like an elephant in the forest. It is better to live alone. There is no companionship with a fool. Let a man walk alone, let him commit no sin, with few wishes, like an elephant in the forest. If an occasion arises, friends are pleasant, enjoyment is pleasant, whatever be the cause. A good work is pleasant in the hour of death, the giving up of all grief is pleasant. Pleasant in the world is the state of a mother, pleasant the state of a father. Pleasant the state of a samana, pleasant the state of a brahmana. Pleasant is virtue lasting to old age, pleasant is a faith firmly rooted, pleasant is attainment of intelligence, pleasant is avoiding of sins. Chapter 24 Thirst The thirst of a thoughtless man grows like a creeper. He runs from life to life like a monkey seeking fruit in the forest. Whomsoever this fierce thirst overcomes, full of poison, in this world, his sufferings increase like the abounding birana grass. He who overcomes this fierce thirst, difficult to be conquered in this world, sufferings fall off from him, like water drops from a lotus leaf. This salutary word I tell you, do ye, as many as are here assembled, dig up the root of thirst, as he who wants the sweet-scented usira root must dig up the birana grass, that Mara the tempter may not crush you again and again, as the stream crushes the reeds. 
as a tree, even though it has been cut down, is firm so long as its root is safe, and grows again, thus, unless the feeders of thirst are destroyed, the pain of life will return again and again. He whose thirst running toward pleasure is exceeding strong in the thirty-six channels, the waves will carry away that misguided man, namely his desires which are set on passion. The channels run everywhere. The creeper of passion stands sprouting. If you see the creeper springing up, cut its roots by means of knowledge. A creature's pleasures are extravagant and luxurious. Sunk in lust and looking for pleasure, men undergo again and again birth and decay. Men, driven on by thirst, run about like a snared hare, held in fetters and bonds. They undergo pain for a long time, again and again. Men, driven on by thirst, run about like a snared hare. Let, therefore, the mendicant drive out thirst by striving after passionlessness for himself. He who, having got rid of the forest of lust, that is, after having reached nirvana, gives himself over to forest life, that is, to lust, and who, when removed from the forest, that is, from lust, runs to the forest, that is, to lust, Look at that man. Though free, he runs into bondage. Wise people do not call that a strong fetter, which is made of iron, wood, or hemp. Far stronger is the care for precious stones and rings, for sons and a wife. That fetter wise people call strong, which drags down, yields, but is difficult to undo. After having cut this at last, people leave the world, free from cares, and leaving desires and pleasures behind. Those who are slaves to passions run down with the stream of desires, as a spider runs down the web which he has made himself. When they have cut this at last, wise people leave the world free from cares, leaving all affection behind. Give up what is before, give up what is behind, give up what is in the middle, when thou goest to the other shore of existence. If thy mind is altogether free, thou wilt not again enter into birth and decay. If a man is tossed about by doubts, full of strong passions, and yearning only for what is delightful, his thirst will grow more and more, and he will indeed make his fetters strong. If a man delights in quieting doubts, and, always reflecting, dwells on what is not delightful, the impurity of the body, etc., he certainly will remove, nay, he will cut the fetter of Mara. He who has reached the consummation, who does not tremble, who is without thirst and without sin, he has broken all the thorns of life. This will be his last body. He who is without thirst and without affection, who understands the words and their interpretation, who knows the order of letters, those which are before and which are after, he has received his last body. He is called the great sage, the great man. I have conquered all. I know all. In all conditions of life I am free from taint. I have left all, and through the destruction of thirst I am free. Having learnt myself, whom shall I teach? The gift of the law exceeds all gifts. The sweetness of the law exceeds all sweetness. The delight in the law exceeds all delights. The extinction of thirst overcomes all pain. Pleasures destroy the foolish if they look not for the other shore. The foolish by his thirst for pleasures destroys himself, as if he were his own enemy. 
The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by passion. Therefore a gift bestowed on the passionless brings great reward. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by hatred. Therefore, a gift bestowed on those who do not hate brings great reward. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by vanity. Therefore, a gift bestowed on those who are free from vanity brings great reward. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by lust. Therefore, a gift bestowed on those who are free from lust brings great reward. Chapter 25 The Bhikshu, the Mendicant Restraint in the eye is good. Good is restraint in the ear. In the nose restraint is good. Good is restraint in the tongue. In the body restraint is good. Good is restraint in speech. In thought restraint is good. Good is restraint in all things. A bhikshu, restrained in all things, is freed from all pain. He who controls his hand, he who controls his feet, he who controls his speech, he who is well controlled, he who delights inwardly, who is collected, who is solitary and content, him they call bhikshu. The bhikshu who controls his mouth, who speaks wisely and calmly, who teaches the meaning and the law, his word is sweet. He who dwells in the law, delights in the law, meditates on the law, follows the law, that bhikshu will never fall away from the true law. Let him not despise what he has received, nor ever envy others. A mendicant who envies others does not obtain peace of mind. A bhikshu who, though he receives little, does not despise what he has received, even the gods will praise him, if his life is pure, and if he is not slothful. He who never identifies himself with name and form, and does not grieve over what is no more, he indeed is called a bhikshu. The bhikshu who acts with kindness, who is calm in the doctrine of Buddha, will reach the quiet place, nirvana, cessation of natural desires, and happiness. O bhikshu, empty this boat. If emptied, it will go quickly. Having cut off passion and hatred, thou wilt go to nirvana. Cut off the five senses. Leave the five. Rise above the five. A bhikshu who has escaped from the five fetters, he is called Ogatina, saved from the flood. Meditate, O bhikshu, and be not heedless. Do not direct thy thought to what gives pleasure, that thou mayest not for thy heedlessness have to swallow the iron ball in hell, and that thou mayest not cry out when burning, This is pain. Without knowledge there is no meditation. Without meditation there is no knowledge. He who has knowledge and meditation is near unto nirvana. A bhikshu who has entered his empty house and whose mind is tranquil feels a more than human delight when he sees the law clearly. As soon as he has considered the origin and destruction of the elements, khanda, of the body, he finds happiness and joy which belongs to those who know the immortal, nirvana. And this is the beginning here for a wise bhikshu. Watchfulness over the senses, contentedness, restraint under the law. Keep noble friends whose life is pure and who are not slothful. Let him live in charity. Let him be perfect in his duties. 
then in the fullness of delight he will make an end of suffering. As the vasika plant sheds its withered flowers, men should shed passion and hatred, O ye bhikshus. The bhikshu, whose body and tongue and mind are quieted, who is collected, and has rejected the baits of the world, he is called quiet. Rouse thyself by thyself. Examine thyself by thyself. Thus self-protected and attentive wilt thou live happily, O bhikshu. For self is the lord of self. Self is the refuge of self. Therefore curb thyself, as the merchant curbs a good horse. The bhikshu, full of delight, who is calm in the doctrine of Buddha, will reach the quiet place, nirvana, cessation of natural desires and happiness. He who, even as a young bhikshu, applies himself to the doctrine of Buddha, brightens up this world, like the moon when free from clouds. End of section 6 Recording by Roger Turnell